This is Hong Kong, one of Asia's richest and most beautiful cities, as its name suggests, meaning fragrant harbor city. I call it a city because it's an autonomous region under Chinese control and doesn't have the status of a country. Hong Kong, which was under British colonial rule for about 150 years, became an autonomous administrative region under the People's Republic of China in 1997. Today, due to its cultural diversity, it holds the status of a global city in Asia, and it has enormous economic potential. In fact, it is among the top 15 regions with the highest per capita national income in the world, with an average of $72,860. Moreover, Hong Kong is listed among the 10 most productive cities in the world in recent researches. At the top of the list are usually New York City from the United States and Tokyo, the capital of Japan. Hong Kong has a tiny land area of 2755 square kilometers, yet it's home to 7.5 million people. People from surrounding Asian countries, especially from the south of China, flock to this port city to find work and have fun. It's a place where the world's largest tech companies have their headquarters, and it boasts immense cultural diversity. That's why the first thing you'll notice when you arrive in Hong Kong is the abundance of people. The majority of the population here is, of course, Chinese. It's estimated that over 90% of the population in Hong Kong is of Chinese descent. After them, people from low-income South Asian countries like Pakistan, India and Nepal contribute significantly to the population of this city. Many people from these South Asian countries migrate to Hong Kong to build their lives and work there while sending money back to their families in their home countries. Filipinos in particular often work as elderly caregivers in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, there's no fixed concept of a minimum wage. People receive wages based on an hourly rate, as is the case in many parts of the world. As of 2024, the minimum hourly wage in there is 45 Hong Kong dollars, which is equivalent to approximately six US dollars per hour. If you consider a person working an average of eight hours a day, five days a week, their minimum monthly income will be around $900. Of course, these rates are for the most unskilled occupations in Hong Kong. People who specialize in certain fields can earn around a minimum of $3,000 per month, which is above global standards. If you're a dentist, doctor, or an engineer working for a good company, it's not unrealistic to earn between $7,000 and $10,000 per month in this region. However, despite this, living in cities like Hong Kong and Singapore is very expensive. Due to limited space, people often have to live in high-rise buildings of 15 or 20 stories. To put it figuratively, you can expect to pay around $2,500 per month in rent for a two-bedroom apartment of about 50 or 60 square meters. The rents for 100 square meter, three-bedroom apartments in the city center are over $10,000. Moreover, not all buildings in Hong Kong are brand new, so the high rents shouldn't make you think they are living in luxurious apartments. Indeed, there are buildings in Hong Kong known as monster buildings dating back to 1970. These buildings appear so old and faded from the outside that visitors to Hong Kong always make a point to visit them and take photos in front of these old buildings. When you carefully look at these buildings, they can truly leave you astonished. Just the thought of such massive structures being demolished is incredibly daunting and may make you wonder if it's a place where you'd want to live. Even if you earn good money there, if you're someone who's uncomfortable with heights and old buildings, living in Hong Kong for an extended period can be quite challenging. Because the land area of Asian cities like Hong Kong is small, rents are extremely high and apartments are small. This is why it's believed that around 600,000 people live on boats in squatter settlements and on the streets in there. Additionally, this city imports a lot of products from abroad, making even groceries quite expensive. So those who want to earn a lot and spend less in South Asia often prefer places like Malaysia or Taiwan. In fact, budget travelers and backpackers visiting Asia often skip Hong Kong or spend only a short time there. The strategic location of this region is indeed evident when you look at it on a map. To the north, this autonomous city is entirely surrounded by Chinese territory, while its southern part faces the South China Sea. Furthermore, 
It is relatively close to Taiwan, with a distance of approximately 550 kilometers between them. That means you can reach Taiwan from Hong Kong by plane in about two hours, with average flight tickets costing around $100. Zooming in on the map, you can see that the city consists of three main parts. While the mainland in the north is known as the Kowloon region, the southern part of the city consists of two other regions, Hong Kong Island and Lantau Island. The city has been connected through bridges, creating a unified central area. Thanks to this multifaceted structure, this city has built bustling ports where ships and ferries can dock. In this densely populated city, local land transportation is primarily facilitated by trains and subways. Moreover, travelers coming here for leisure can also easily reach Mako, another autonomous Chinese region, from Hong Kong either by sea or via one of the world's longest bridges. This bridge spans 55 kilometers, connecting two cities over water and stands as one of China's monumental construction achievements. As you walk the streets of this region, you naturally come across plenty of Chinese individuals. The fact that it's a global business hub raises the percentage of English-speaking residents in the city. However, it's essential to note that the majority of the population speaks Chinese as their native language. And due to this predominance of the Chinese population, they adhere to beliefs such as Buddhism and Taoism. They operate independently of China, which is why their currency and local laws are managed autonomously. Unlike China, this place boasts a more democratic structure. In fact, one of the primary reasons Taiwanese people don't want to unite with China is its lack of democracy. Therefore, both Taiwan and Hong Kong lead a more Western-style life compared to mainland China. There are almost no restrictions on the streets. People can freely roam, have fun, record videos, criticize those in power, and even participate in protests. If someone wants to come here, they don't need a visa from the People's Republic of China. You can enjoy visa-free access to both Hong Kong and Macau. However, if you decide to tour China after Hong Kong, that will require a separate visa. When you enter a cafe in Hong Kong and take a seat, you might notice that some cafes also function as laundromats. A similar situation exists in Singapore. I assume that homeless individuals visit these public laundromats to wash their clothes for a modest fee. It seems like they enjoy a cup of coffee while their laundry is being done. If you intend to hop on a bus for transportation in the city, you'll find that buses and trams are generally double-decker vehicles. To use these public transport options, you need to purchase a card for 200 Hong Kong dollars, equivalent to 25 US dollars, from the train station. You can use this card for payments on all public transport and even some restaurants. Furthermore, when you return the card once your business in Hong Kong is complete, you receive a refund of 50 Hong Kong dollars. Exploring the city from end to end on trains has become an immensely enjoyable pastime for locals. Especially if you're visiting Asian countries for the first time, touring the city with tram-like public transportation is a cost-effective way to explore the city rapidly. Don't worry about finding an empty seat on these trams in such a crowded city, because Hong Kong boasts a current fleet of 165 trams and the associated rail system is extensive. It's said that these double-decker trams transport an average of 200,000 people daily from one place to another. If traveling by tram feels too slow for you, and you're one who prefers taxis for transportation, it's worth mentioning that the taxis here, unlike the typical yellow cabs, are red in color. These taxis, much like in New York, have become synonymous with a particular model, and the majority of the taxis on the roads are of the same type. One remarkable aspect of Hong Kong's urban planning is how clean and pristine the streets and roads are, something you might admire despite the high population. Except for occasional exceptions in the narrow side streets, you'll hardly spot any litter on the ground. Given the limited space in the city, many restaurants and cafes have moved to upper floors. There are electronic escalator systems that take you up to these upper buildings, allowing you to explore the city not just on the ground, but also on its hills. In these areas, you'll even find Buddhist temples alongside commercial establishments. From time to time, you might come across peculiar sites in the city. For instance, groups of people gather under a specific bridge or beneath a building sitting on cardboard spread around. 
When you try to understand the reason behind this, they explain that it's because low-income individuals can't afford to dine out after work, so they gather with loved ones in these spaces, chat and share a meal. Observing people's faces as you walk the streets, they don't seem particularly stressed. They don't give the impression of struggling with various financial difficulties or insurmountable problems. They appear to be leading rather ordinary, routine lives, and their well-being reflects in their facial expressions. You might even spot people dancing in the middle of the road. In the narrow alleyways of the city, you'll find plenty of souvenir shops. However, people seem more interested in heading to the seaside. Along the shoreline, there's a concrete strip lined with major corporations, and people absolutely love taking photographs against this backdrop. Almost everyone grabs their phone or camera, with those towering buildings behind them adding a Hong Kong memory to their lives. Furthermore, there's also the option of experiencing Disneyland in Hong Kong. In other words, you don't have to travel all the way to Paris for the Disneyland adventure. Especially if you visit Hong Kong Disneyland at night, you can expect magnificent visual shows. Shows of this kind transport you away from real life into a more enchanting atmosphere, and they truly succeed in creating this ambience with light displays. You'll also come across plenty of electronic shops in Hong Kong. However, I wouldn't recommend buying electronic goods from here unless you're absolutely compelled to. This is because they tend to be more expensive than in other parts of the world, and it's challenging to determine the authenticity of the products in these seemingly mobile stalls. They might even sell you a replica product, claiming it's genuine. Hong Kong is one of the three cities in the world with the most billionaires the other two being Moscow and New York. So while exploring Hong Kong, you'll see plenty of luxury cars and some of those driving them are likely millionaires or billionaires. Indeed, there is quite an abundance of ultra-luxury cars on the streets. It's said that there are currently 82 individuals with a net worth of a billion dollars or more living there. Moreover, not all of these individuals are Chinese. For those interested in establishing companies and making investments in Hong Kong, the tax system is much lower compared to places like London and New York. If you're curious about how nightlife works in Hong Kong, it's quite similar to other Asian countries in that the real action happens at night. Nearly every venue is packed and the streets are bustling with people. Some places even have costume themes. For instance, people dress up in outfits resembling characters they admire, using makeup to look like them. Some become pirates while others become nurses. The Chinese people here are all very well-groomed, and under the influence of alcohol, they really let loose. It seems that women, in particular, place more physical importance on these nights compared to men. They all seem well-groomed and quite stylish in their outfits. Additionally, a variety of street foods await you in Hong Kong, perfect for your first-time taste test. When you see how much the locals enjoy these foods, you might want to give them a try too. Especially noteworthy is the fact that these food vendors still wear masks. If you visit their stalls during the day, you'll often find them cooking in woks, preparing dishes predominantly with chicken and fish. Their working environments appear more hygienic compared to other South Asian countries. Given that Hong Kong is a port city, a penchant for fish isn't surprising. It seems like this city will continue to be one of the world's most popular and expensive cities for quite some time. If you enjoyed the video and found it informative, please consider subscribing to the channel. Goodbye.